So now let's dive into the sort of big O notation. We've talked about it a little bit, but let's sort of dive in a little bit. We're going to go through it by looking at visualization first. And then we'll try and turn that visualization into a definition. We'll go through an example, and then I'll leave you with an exercise. So let's start by looking at the visualization. Now this plot is important. It is essentially the visualization of the big O notation. You've got the runtime versus the input size. And you can see C times G of n and F of n. And there exists an n naught. And you can see that for n greater than or equal to n naught, f of n is always less than or equal to c times g of n. So that's what you, you need to have the sort of visualization embedded, right, in your minds. Now what we need to do is we need to translate this visualization into something more formal, into a sort of a mathematical structure, so to speak. So as we're turning this into math, what do we have? We have fn and g of n. So we let fn and g of n be functions mapping positive integers to positive real numbers. And then we say that fn is order g of n if there are constants c greater than 0 and n naught. We saw the c, we saw the n naught. So there are constants c greater than 0 and n naught such that f of n is less than or equal to c times g of n for all n greater than or equal to n naught. And we saw that in the visualization. Yeah. So we had a visualization and then we translated that visualization into a little bit more of a formal structure. So this is essentially the definition of the big O notation. Now to get a sort of handle on it, let's look at an example. So consider the function 2n plus 2. And our objective is to show that this is order n. So what is it that's needed? What is it that we're really after? We need to find a c greater than 0. We need to find a constant c greater than 0 and an n naught such that 2n plus 2 is less than or equal to cn for n greater than or equal to n naught. So what we can essentially do is you know, actually plug in some numerical values. So assume that you have c is equal to 2 and n naught is equal to 2. You can quickly work out that it doesn't work because the right hand side is c times n. So that would be 2 times 2 is 4. The left hand side would be 6. So it doesn't work. But if we change c to be 3 and n naught to be 2, it works. You can work that out. It works. So essentially, that's what you need to do to be able to show that a particular function in this case 2n plus 2 is actually order n. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just leave you with an exercise. In a similar way that we did the example, can you actually show that 2n squared plus 2n plus 2 is order n squared? So essentially what we've done is we started with a visualization. We translated that visualization into more of a, into a more, more of a sort of mathematical formal structure. It wasn't extremely formal, but it had a sort of mathematical structure to it. And that's the definition. We did an example and I'm leaving you with an exercise.